All right, so we're back, and we've kind of repositioned the camera a little bit for us so we could get a better view of what we're going to be doing. So going back to what we are saying, we're going to be mounting these along the front and the side of these. Now we only have four of them, so we're going to go ahead and mount two on each side, the front, the side, the front, and the side, and then worry about what's going to happen afterwards. This is kind of us having a little bit of uh, foresight into how we're going to be building this and how we're going to be using this. So we're imagining that we'll be putting some sensors towards the front. So what I'm basically doing now is I'm just taking out some screws, the same ones we've been using for the entire kit, and getting them ready for all the uh, panels that we'll be mounting. There's quite a bit in here, so we don't really have too many worries about running out, at least not now. Each panel will take four. So I'm going to take out here. Uh, 16 of these. There we have it. So we have 16 of these there. Now according to the picture we have here in the assembly guide, this is the bottom part, so we're going to put this slit here towards the bottom. And let's just see how easy these are going to screw in. Look at that, fits right in. Without even thinking too much. Now again I'm putting these diagonally. Make And I'm not screwing them in all the way. I want to make sure that they uh, the holes line up properly and that this is all set up how we need to be. Okay, so that's one. Let's go ahead and mount the next one. Now I wouldn't put these in too tight because you might need to take them off afterwards when you try to mount these uh, sensors in place. But for now, this should suffice. And again, these are, uh, you don't, I don't think you necessarily have to do this, mount all of these in place. Uh, this is optional, from what I gather. Uh, this is a kit that's highly customizable to what you want to do. So if you need them, you should put them there. If you don't, don't bother. Um, maybe put some different panels there or just cover it up. I actually saw somebody online uh, turn this into uh, an R2-D2 type uh, kit. I've also seen them turn it into a Wally -E from the movie. Um, and they've done different things with it, which is kind of nice. If you check on the e robot or the DF Robot website, you actually see some of those videos and action shots. Another guy actually took the, took the laptop, mounted it to the top, and uh, had it roaming around, and the laptop actually made expressions like if it was its face, which is kind of an interesting touch. What we like to do is rather than, uh, you know, typically with our own personal projects, and we've talked about it in the past is rather than putting sensors everywhere, we actually put a pan tilt mechanism with a pseudo robot head, which has a series of sensors, and our sketches or software or firmware, whatever you like to call it, actually takes sensor readings and determines what to do based off of that. Um, moving it around, moving forward, backwards, constantly reading from all the different sensors. It's just a different approach, and it also requires a lot less. In, uh, in terms of how many sensors you need. However, you know, there are the, uh, with kits like this one, on the other hand, where you have all the sensors everywhere, you know, that could be a negative part, but it's also an upside because you can get constant readings from any direction and anything, or any anything around the actual kit. So as you can see, that's screwed in really nicely and it's uh, nice and flush. I'm going to flip this over now and we're going to do the other side, exactly what we already did. Excuse me. There we go.
Okay. Then we have the next one here. More screws left. That one's being a little stubborn. Let me try to get this one out and see if I can wiggle it around. And there we go. Now I'm just going to take the Allen key once more, tighten each one of these up. And there we go. So there we have it. As you can see, now we've got these panels up. And this is starting to come to life. This is great news. Now the next step will be to actually mount the uh, control panel. Now I'm just going to kind of get oriented here for a second. Now according to this, we're going to need to mount it to the back of the unit, which is exactly where I think it should be and uh, I think it's excellent positioning. It's actually going to get mounted underneath here with these two screws that are these two holes here that you can see. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, put this in place. This has been an interesting kit. Just like other uh, DF robot kits that we've worked with, you know, at first we get surprised, we're like, oh boy, this is going to be a tough one. And then we find out that they've thought it through pretty well and uh, we don't have to wind up doing much thinking and just everything kind of goes into place where it's supposed to. Now let's just kind of get a quick feel here. Check this out. There are actually two spots where this could be mounted. And I want to make sure I mount it to the correct spot here. So they actually show it mounting to the first two holes. There's two sets here. We're going to mount them to these in the front that are closest to the outside. Again, we're just going to slip this through here. That's one. And there's a the second one. I think we might have grabbed that screw again. That was giving us issues. Let's grab another one here. Another nice thing is that even though you have to wiggle your way around this kit to screw things in, 
it's big enough that you can easily put your hands in everywhere and it's not that difficult. And there we go. So this is mounted. Here are those buttons we were looking at earlier. This just looks like an extra hole here for an extra button and the charging uh, plug. I think this is going to be our on. This might be like a reset or like a, some sort, which is nice to have. Okay, and moving on to the other panels that we have here, which are the, again, for the ultrasonic sensors. But however, these look like they're going to be mounted in different spots. So let's see here. Now they're pretty laid back about where these go mounted, actually. So let's just check this out because we might be able to mount these in a couple spots here. Mount the other one here. Sure enough, we can mount one in the back, it looks like. Might need to reverse it. All right. So we're going to mount one in the front and one in the back. Each one requires two of these. Now this bag comes complete with a series of washers and lock nuts and whatnot. What we did was to uh, speed up the build process is not use those. Um, we found that for our purposes it would be enough. But we do suggest that uh, you use the, the spacers, the washers, the lock nuts whenever you have to. Um, we tried to use them in spots where we thought would be the most critical and leave out the other spots where we thought wouldn't be that critical for our purposes. So, let's see how we're going to do this here. I'm going to give this a turn. Just to get it started. There we go. Got it started. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tilt this on the side here. See if I can get in there better. that's in place. Let me just turn this around so I can actually get in here and uh, screw that in. I might need to stop here because the angle is so hard to get into that uh, you might be bored just looking at the top of this robot kit. So let's break here and uh, we'll be back when we're done screwing these suckers in. Then we'll move on to the next step.